universe is expanding. All of those galaxies you can see with your eyes, they're all moving away from each other in all directions. The universe is expanding, but expanding into what? Is our universe akin to a limp balloon in a box that, when inflated, expands, filling the space within the box? Science, through its relentless pursuit of understanding the natural world, has equipped us with the means to explore the vastness of the universe and the intricacy of molecular structures. Advancements in microscopy have unveiled the detailed architecture of atoms, molecules, and the complex machinery of life at the nanoscale. Yet even these discoveries pale in comparison to what lies beyond Earth. On a cosmic scale, telescopes and space probes have extended our gaze billions of light years away, allowing us to study the birth and death of stars, the dance of galaxies, and the afterglow of the Big Bang itself. Now we are getting our first glimpses of the edge of the universe, and what it's showing us is almost too much for the human brain to comprehend. Galaxies upon galaxies, queer voids of empty space, radiation, hidden worlds, and black holes. Our universe contains everything that could and would ever be conceived. Almost daily, our analysis of the universe threatens to change everything we know or think we know about it. The cosmos is defined by several key horizons, each marking a different kind of boundary in our quest to understand the universe. They are the particle horizon, the event horizon, and the Hubble horizon. Each one, in its own way, represents a different theoretical limit related to the observable universe, the future observability of events, and the expansion of space, respectively. The particle horizon, for instance, delineates the edge of the observable universe, setting a limit on how far back in time we can see. It's the ultimate cosmic vista, encompassing all that can be observed from our vantage point in space and time. Its distance is determined by the universe's age and the speed of light, because light from objects beyond this horizon has not had enough time to reach us since the universe's beginning. Therefore, as time progresses, the particle horizon will continuously expand as the light from more distant regions makes its way to us, or whatever versions of us will be occupying Earth at that time. The event horizon, primarily associated with black holes, serves as a boundary concerning our capacity to receive information. When an object crosses the event horizon of a black hole, it enters a region where no signals or information can escape. In this context, the event horizon establishes the limit beyond which events remain perpetually concealed from our observational abilities. The event horizon marks the boundary beyond which events cannot affect us or be observed by us. It's a frontier of causality, beyond which the universe unfolds in ways we can never hope to witness or influence. Of course, the presence of an event horizon is significant because it implies that parts of the universe will forever be inaccessible to us due to the ongoing acceleration of the universe's expansion, which is again driven by dark energy. Finally, there's the Hubble horizon, the third boundary dictated by the universe's expansion. Objects beyond this horizon are receding from us faster than the speed of light, making them forever invisible to our current observational capabilities. However, the Hubble horizon is not static. Like the universe, it expands, gradually bringing previously unseen regions into our field of view. Yet, this expansion also isolates us, as galaxies once visible drift beyond our reach, leaving us in a cosmic bubble of observable space that will slowly shrink over cosmic timescales. As important as they all are on their own, it's the interplay between these horizons, particle, event, and Hubble, that most shapes our current understanding of the universe. They not only represent the limits of our current knowledge and observation, but also hint at the vast, unexplored territories that lie just beyond our reach. Even more important to understand is that as these horizons expand or contract, they redefine the boundaries of the observable universe, offering new challenges and opportunities for discovery. In exploring these cosmic horizons, we are often confronted with the ultimate questions of cosmology and philosophy. What does it mean to exist in a universe with such vast, unobservable realms? How do we reconcile our quest for knowledge with the inherent limitations imposed by the very nature of space and time? These questions drive the human spirit of exploration, pushing us to expand the horizons of our understanding, one star, one galaxy, one photon at a time. Today, we're looking at the universe as it is 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang. 
Most of the galaxies we see are grouped together in clusters like the local group or bigger ones like the Virgo cluster. These clusters are separated by huge areas of mostly empty space called cosmic voids. The galaxies in these groups have different shapes, some like spirals and some like ellipses. On average, galaxies similar to our Milky Way usually form around one new star like our Sun each year. Additionally, most of the regular matter in the universe is mainly hydrogen and helium. However, about 1-2% to of this matter consists of heavier elements from the periodic table. These heavier elements are crucial for the formation of rocky planets like Earth and play a significant role in enabling complex chemistry, including the formation of organic compounds. This mix of elements provides the necessary building blocks for the diverse and intricate processes that contribute to the complexity of our cosmic environment. When we observe galaxies, we notice a variety of characteristics. Some galaxies are actively forming stars, some host active black holes, while others haven't formed new stars for billions of years. Despite this variety, the galaxies we see are generally large, evolved and clustered together. As we look deeper into space, we gain insight into how the universe developed into its current state. At greater distances, we observe that the universe appears slightly less clumped and more uniform, especially on larger scales. This means that, on average, matter is distributed more evenly across vast cosmic distances. This is evident in the large-scale structure of the universe, where we see cosmic web-like patterns with galaxy clusters and voids. Galaxies are lower in mass and less evolved, with more spirals and fewer elliptical galaxies. There's a higher proportion of bluer stars, indicating a higher rate of star formation in the past. As we look farther back in time, we are essentially observing the universe in its earlier stages of development. On average, there's less space between galaxies, but the overall masses of groups and clusters were smaller in earlier times. Over time, smaller structures merged to form larger ones through gravitational interactions, leading to the formation of the galaxy clusters and superclusters we observe today. This description illustrates how today's large galaxies formed over cosmic ages. In earlier times, galaxies were Physically smaller, lower in mass, closer together, more numerous, bluer in color, richer in gas, forming stars at higher rates, and contained fewer heavy elements than galaxies today. As we look farther back in time, the picture of the universe changes abruptly. When we observe a point about 19 billion light years away, corresponding to roughly 3 billion years after the Big Bang, we see that the rate of star formation in the universe reached its peak. It was about 20 to 30 times higher than the rate at which new stars form today. During this period, a significant number of supermassive black holes were active, emitting huge amounts of particles and radiation as they consumed surrounding matter. For the past approximately 11 billion years, the evolution of the universe has been slowing down. Although gravity continues to shape structures, the influence of dark energy starts to counteract it becoming the dominant force in the universe's expansion over 6 billion years ago. While new stars are still forming, the peak of star formation occurred in the distant past. Supermassive black holes are still growing, but they were brightest earlier on, and a larger fraction of them are now fainter and inactive compared to the early stages of the universe. As we journey closer to the edge, marked by the beginning of the hot Big Bang, we witness even more significant changes in the universe. Looking back to distances of 19 billion light-years, corresponding to a time when the universe was just 3 billion years old, we find that star formation was at its peak, and the proportion of heavy elements was perhaps only around 0.3 to 0.5% of normal matter. Moving closer to 27 billion light-years away, which represents a time when the universe was only 1 billion years old, we see a drastic decrease in star formation rates. New stars formed at rates approximately a quarter of what they would be at their peak. Additionally, the percentage of normal matter consisting of heavy elements dropped significantly, to 0.1% at 1 billion years old, and to just 0.01% at around 500 million years old. This suggests that rocky planets may have been improbable in these early environments. Furthermore, during this early period, the cosmic microwave background was considerably hotter, emitting infrared rather than microwave wavelengths. 
Every galaxy in the universe during this time should be young and filled with young stars, with likely no elliptical galaxies present. Exploring further back in time than this stretches the capabilities of our current instruments, but telescopes like Keck, Spitzer, and Hubble started delving into these realms in the 1990s. When we venture back to distances of about 29 billion light years or more, corresponding to a time when the universe was roughly 700 to 800 million years old, we encounter the first barrier, the edge of transparency. Today, we take it for granted that space allows visible light to pass through because it lacks light-blocking materials like dust or neutral gas. However, in the early universe, before enough stars had formed, neutral gas filled space, preventing full transparency. The ultraviolet radiation emitted by stars hadn't ionized this gas completely yet. As a result, much of the light emitted is obscured by these neutral atoms. It's only as more stars form that the universe becomes fully reionized. This is one reason why infrared telescopes, like NASA's latest flagship mission, the JWST, are essential for studying the early universe. There's a limit to how far we can see using the wavelengths of light we're accustomed to due to this edge caused by neutral gas. At distances of 31 billion light years, which corresponds to just 550 million years after the Big Bang, we reach the edge of reionization. This is when most of the universe becomes mostly transparent to optical light. Reionization happens gradually and unevenly, resembling a jagged, porous wall. Some areas experience reionization earlier, while others remain partially neutral for nearly a billion years. For instance, Hubble discovered its most distant galaxy at 32 billion light years away, just 407 million years after the Big Bang. The JWS has pushed our boundaries even further, revealing galaxies as far back as 330 million years after the Big Bang. These galaxies still appear large and evolved, not quite pristine in terms of their elemental composition. There are likely more stars and galaxies beyond what the JWS has revealed so far. As technology advances and observational tools improve, astronomers expect to unveil even more distant and faint objects, contributing to a deeper understanding of the early universe. Although our current telescopes have limits, we can still detect indirect signs of star formation. One method is by observing the emission of light from hydrogen atoms, which occurs when stars form, causing ionization followed by the recombination of free electrons with ionized nuclei, emitting light in the process. Currently, we only have indirect evidence of early star formation, although some experts question the reliability of this signal. It suggests that young galaxies emerged as early as 180 to 260 million years after the Big Bang. These proto-galaxies formed enough stars for us to detect faint hints of their presence hidden in the data, located at a distance of roughly 34 to 36 billion light-years away. While our current telescopes haven't directly observed these galaxies, many astronomers anticipate that an extended deep-field exposure with the JWST will uncover them. However, it's probable that there are still sources of light, as well as the initial ionized regions of space in the universe, dating even earlier than these proto-galaxies. The very first stars likely formed in the rare regions where mass density grew the fastest, anticipated to be between 38 and 40 billion light-years away. This corresponds to a time just 50 to 100 million years after the Big Bang. Before this era, the universe was entirely dark, filled with neutral atoms, and illuminated only by radiation from the residual glow of the Big Bang. As we journey even further into the past, we anticipate encountering more fascinating boundaries. At a distance of 44 billion light-years away, the radiation from the Big Bang was so intense that it became visible. If a human eye were present, it would perceive this radiation starting to glow red, akin to a red-hot surface. This occurrence took place just 3 million years after the Big Bang. Moving back to 45.4 billion light-years away, we arrive at a time approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Here, it becomes too hot to maintain neutral atoms stably. This is the origin of the residual glow from the Big Bang, known as the cosmic microwave background. If you've ever seen the famous image of the hot, red, and cold blue spots captured by the Planck satellite, this is where that radiation originates. Before reaching this point, at a distance of 46 billion light-years away, we reach the earliest stages of the universe, the ultra-energetic state of the hot Big Bang. 
It's here where the first atomic nuclei, protons, neutrons, and even the earliest stable forms of matter were created. At these stages, the universe can only be described as a cosmic, primordial soup, where every particle and antiparticle could be generated from pure energy. What lies beyond the frontier of this high-energy soup remains a mystery. We lack direct evidence of what occurred in those earliest stages, although many predictions of cosmic inflation have been indirectly confirmed. The edge of the universe, as we perceive it, is unique to our viewpoint. We can observe back 13.8 billion years in time in all directions, depending on the observer's space-time location. The endeavor to understand the full scale of the universe is an exercise that pushes the boundaries of human imagination and brain power to its absolute limits. For instance, our planet Earth has an incomprehensibly large number of atoms. But this pales in comparison to the sheer volume of the observable universe, which spans a mind-boggling 93 billion light-years in diameter. Within this vast expanse, the number of its atoms is a figure that dwarfs even the most abstract concepts of size within our everyday experience to the point that the numbers simply don't do it justice. But again, there's no way to know this. If the universe is indeed endless, so too would the number of atoms. For now, let's stay within the boundaries provided by our three conceptual horizons. If we were to divide the entirety of the observable universe into the smallest measurable units of space, known as Planck volumes, we'd find a staggering 1 times 10 to the power of 185 of these infinitesimal cubes. The very notion of holding such a colossal number in one's mind is a fantastical exercise, often suggested by cosmologists to be capable of generating a black hole due to the immense density of information that would be required. In fact, this mental exercise evokes the ancient paradox proposed by Zeno, illustrating the inherent difficulties in grasping concepts of infinity within our finite understanding. Zeno's paradox involves a thought experiment where a traveler must cover an infinite number of steps to reach their destination. In this exercise, Zeno asked his followers to imagine they were trying to travel from their current location back to their home. Logically, before they can complete the entire journey, they must reach the halfway point. Likewise, before they can get to the halfway point, they must reach the quarterway point, and so on, ad infinitum. According to Zeno's reasoning, this process of having the distance repeatedly introduces an infinite number of steps that one must complete before reaching their destination. Likewise, this posits that it's possible to keep moving forward without ever getting there. The challenge humans face in comprehending infinity stems from its fundamental nature as a concept. This is because it, by its very nature, goes beyond the finite, tangible experiences and cognitive constructs that form the basis of human understanding. Infinity is not a quantity or a thing that can be measured, observed, or experienced directly in the physical world. Instead, it represents an abstract idea that extends without limit, whether in mathematics, physics, or philosophy. Human cognition is geared towards dealing with finite, discrete quantities and objects. Therefore, our brains have evolved to process information about the physical world around us, which is inherently finite and bounded. The concept of something without end, whether it's a never-ending series of numbers, an eternal universe, or an infinite space, challenges these evolved cognitive mechanisms. Particularly in terms of the universe, infinity raises profound philosophical and existential questions about the nature of reality and our place within it. The idea of something that never ends or begins challenges many of our fundamental notions about existence and the very nature of knowledge. Some scientists have even theorized that the edge of the universe formed by the three horizons is actually the only thing that allows us to understand any of this information without going insane. The universe, vast and mysterious, unfolds with multiple edges that demarcate distinct cosmic frontiers. These edges include the transparency edge, marking the limit where radiation can travel freely, the stellar and galactic edge, signifying the boundary of luminous celestial structures, the neutral atom edge, where the universe transitions from an ionized plasma to a neutral state, and finally, the cosmic horizon edge, a boundary set by the limitations imposed by the finite age of the universe since the Big Bang. While our telescopes can take us as far as we can see, there's always a fundamental limit, even if space extends infinitely, the time since the hot Big Bang does not. 
Despite our technological advancements or the passage of time, there will forever be aspects of the cosmos concealed from our scrutiny. The universe, like a cosmic enigma, holds secrets that elude our comprehension. Regardless of how long we wait, we are confronted by the stark reality that there will always be an edge beyond which we cannot see. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.